everyone, this is Jeff Challen, and this is the first in a series of screencasts designed to help you get started with the opsclass.org programming assignment. So let's start with assignment zero, uh, which is where I am. I'm on the website here looking at it. Um, and what I want to focus on in this particular screencast is just getting you set up uh, with an environment where you can build and run OS161 kernels. So I'm going to scroll down to here. Now you have a couple choices here. If you have access to a shared machine, such as Timberlake at UB, uh, your course staff may have installed the tool chain there. Um, the CSE IT guys are very nice and helped us out. So the Sys1621 simulator and tool chain is installed on Timberlake. You do need to add it to your path. That's the only thing you would have to do to use it on Timberlake. If you have your own computer that runs Ubuntu natively, then you can install the tool chain using um, a PPA that we set up on Launchpad. It's easiest if you're using one of the Ubuntu LTS releases, but if you're using another release, it's also possible. Uh, you just need to sort of modify things a little bit when you do the installation. So if you have an Ubuntu host, and if you don't, you might want to think about one because it's kind of fun to have a, a Linux machine to play with. Um, that's one way to do it. But what I'm going to assume is that you do not have an Ubuntu machine, and you'd like to develop locally rather than using a shared machine like Timberlake. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a software package called Vagrant to set up an Ubuntu uh, virtual machine on that can run on a Windows or on a Mac host. I can actually also run on an Ubuntu host, but that would be kind of silly. So, um, so at this point, I'm going to assume that you've installed Vagrant. Uh, there's great instructions on how to do that. And once you have Vagrant installed, what you need is what's called a Vagrant file, which describes the virtual machine in terms of what type of machine it is and what software packages it has installed. So our Vagrant file is maintained in this particular GitHub repository. I would encourage you to look at this a little bit because it has a readme, which includes basically how you install it, which is not that hard, uh, but also some information about known problems and workarounds that we've encountered on Windows systems. If you encounter things like this, please report them in the forums and, and we'll update this documentation. Or you can pull it and send us a, um, send us a pull, you can fork it and send us a pull request, which would be awesome. All right, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, uh, use get to get this. If you don't have get installed on your host machine, um, you need to do that. Um, I have it installed on Mac. I don't know how to do it on Windows, but I'm sure it's possible. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone our Vagrant repository. That clones into Vagrant by default. Now I'm going to set things up here so that I have an OS161 directory in my home directory. I'm in my home directory now. So to do that, I'm going to just move Vagrant into OS 161. So now what I have is an OS 161 directory with the Vagrant file inside of it. Okay, now this is pretty simple. Um, Vagrant up. What that is going to do, and let me open up a TMUX session so that I can uh, do this in parallel with something else. Um, this is going to begin the process of creating and initializing the Ubuntu virtual machine that will have the OS 161 toolchain installed inside of it. So here. Welcome to, you know, sort of watch this output go by. What's happening is it's creating this machine. Um, it's going to make, perform some updates to it. And essentially what's happening is um, a series of steps that are described in this provisioning file, which is included uh, next to the Vagrant file. So if you look at this, you can see that it's installing some common software packages. It adds our PPA. Uh, it uses the PPA to install the tool chain, and then it sets up um, a user called Trinity that is the default user when you log in. Um, and then it makes a few changes, sets the time zone, blah, blah, blah. So this, this takes a few minutes. Uh, you want to do this uh, somewhere where you have pretty good network access because it's downloading a few things over the web and it'll run faster with a fast connection. So while this is going on, um, just let me point out that when you installed Vagrant, it also installed uh, VirtualBox by default. And if you open up the VirtualBox interface, what you'll see is that here's the virtual machine that was created by the Vagrant up command that I just ran, and it's running. Um, and you don't need to use the uh, VirtualBox manager uh, to manage a Vagrant virtual machine. That's one of the things that's nice about Vagrant, but it's kind of neat to see that, that here it is. And if you want to change things like adjust the amount of memory or uh, things like that, uh, this, this is one way to do that. All right, so let's see how my Vagrant app is going. Um, so what's happening here is it's it's currently in the process of upgrading my kernel modules to match um, to match the ver uh, uh, version of VirtualBox that I'm using. Um, 
And now what's happening is it's starting to actually update the software uh, that's included. Uh, we, we tried to do is we tried to package a very minimal Ubuntu installation so that it doesn't consume too many resources on your system. I mean, essentially this is just to run a couple of pieces of software. Um, so it shouldn't uh, be that large. In the past, we have uh, distributed something that had a GUI and that ended up being uh, kind of big. So this makes sure that, um, that things are small. The other thing I wanna point out is that by default, our Vagrant uh, virtual machine is configured to share this source directory with the guest. So what that means is that any files that you put in the source directory will be visible both on the host and in the guest. And the source directory is there because it's a good place for you to put the OS 161 sources that you're going to download in a later step. That way, if you want to edit them outside the virtual machine and run the make and the run commands inside the virtual machine, you can do that. You can also, of course, edit them inside the virtual machine if you want. Um, the Vagrant virtual machine should persist over time. So once you run Vagrant up, you shouldn't really have to do anything else. Um, I think that when uh, machines are shut down, sometimes the Vagrant VMs are halted. So you can imagine it's like running the virtual machine through a shutdown process. If if you try to run Vagrant SSH and Vagrant tells you that the virtual machine isn't running, all you should have to do is run Vagrant up and it should uh, essentially boot up your virtual machine, at which point the Vagrant um, SSH command will succeed. Um, if you're like me and you use a Mac and you very rarely power it off, uh, you'll find that your uh, Vagrant virtual machine is pretty much running all the time in the background. Um, it doesn't consume very many resources, so it's sort of safe to do that. All right, so this is the awkward point where the Vagrant provisioning command is continuing to run. Um, it's still installing software. You can see that here it's installing uh, the software that it got from our PPA, which includes uh, the bin utils. Oh, it's done. Awesome. Okay, so that completed. Um, if that command does not complete successfully, uh, and in particular, if you look down here, the last output from the command, and it says that something went wrong, the next step will not work. So if you're trying to SSH into your Vagrant virtual machine and it's asking for a password, it means that the install didn't complete properly. So at that point, the best option is to use Vagrant Destroy to, to remove the virtual machine and start over. Okay, but that worked. So now what I can do is run Vagrant SSH. And here I am. So now I'm inside my virtual machine. And, and this may get a little bit tricky, so it's important to kind of maintain the distinction here, right? So I'm using Tmux, which means I have two terminal windows open. Here I am, I'm inside my virtual machine. I'm in a home Trinity directory, and here I'm outside the virtual machine. I'm in my user's channel directory on my Mac. Um, now, as I pointed out, you'll see there's a source directory in here, and that source directory, oops, that source directory is not is shared with the host. So now I'm in my host, and I go into source, and let's create a file. There it is. So the file in the guest actually is, is owned by user Trinity and the host it's owned by me. Um, so, and again, if I wanted to change this, um, then I can see that those changes are reflected in the guest. So this is one way uh, that you can share information between the host and the guest. Now you own this virtual machine. You have pseudo access, um, right? and you can do whatever you want. Uh, we've put some packages in here that we think are helpful. Uh, there's obviously standard utilities like top, uh, LSOF, which is something we use in class. PMAP is installed. Um, I put in something called IOTOP into new versions of the system. So this will show you top-like information, but it tracks the usage of the IO subsystem. It's pretty cool. Um, if you want another piece of software that's not installed here, um, just use apt-get install, whatever. Um, and of course, on Ubuntu-like systems, if you type a command, um, if you type a command that, let's see, let me see if I can figure out a command that wouldn't be installed here. Uh, I'm struggling with this. So anyway, if you, if you type a command and it's not found, uh, it may suggest uh, how to install it, or you can look this up online. Um, but you have complete control over this virtual machine. Now, when you exit the virtual machine, you'll see that the connection is closed to this particular device. Uh, I can get back by running Vagrant SSH again. Okay. If I, now again, if I kind of want to see what the state of the virtual machine is, one way to do that is to go back, open up my VirtualBox uh, terminal and see that this is running. Okay. Um, now, if I want to power it off, this command will do that. This command will 
as you see, it attempts a great graceful shutdown. And now I go back here and I see it's powered off, right? The way to get it back on is to run Vagrant off. But normally, you know, there's no real need to, to power your virtual machine on and off. You should just be able to leave it alone, use SSH to get in as you need, and at all other times, just kind of allow it to run. So this is how to get started uh, with Vagrant. Um, hopefully that helped, helped you out a little bit, sort of got you through the first stage. And uh, I'll continue in the next screencast with how to get the OS 161 sources and how to build your first kernel.